Tonight, on the season finale of The Joe Schmo Show, it's down to the final three. The Hutch, Matt, and Brian. At last, the riveting climax, and a shocking twist will be revealed. Everyone, one second, please. We have a problem. How will Matt react when he discovers the truth? There has apparently been a major violation of the rules. tonight on the season finale of the Joe Schmo Show. What would you do if your entire world turned out to be fake? If an army of writers, producers, and actors spent over a year creating TV's most elaborate experiment around you? If they plotted your every move, recorded it 24 hours a day, and put it on national television? Well, that's exactly what happened to this guy. Meet Matt Kennedy Gould, one real guy competing for $100,000 on a reality show that he doesn't know is fake. Starring nine actors. Melissa Yvonne Lewis as Ashley, the rich bitch. David Hornsby as Hutch, the asshole. Angela Dodson as Molly, the virgin. Franklin Jones as Earl, the veteran. Nikki Davis as Gina, the schemer. Lance Crawl as Kip, the gay guy. Brian Keith Etheridge as Brian, the buddy. Kristen Wiig as Dr. Pat, the quack. And me, Ralph Garman, as the smarmy host. All performing for the one guy who thinks it's real. This place is fucking starting to drive me crazy. This is the Joe Schmo Show. Last time, we left Matt and the actors at the final ceremony, just about to announce the winner of Lap of Luxury. This could be the deciding vote. Tonight, the big reveal. Matt will finally learn the truth. But first, let's take a look back to see how we got to this point. Matt arrived in style to meet and compete with eight castmates he didn't know were actors. Were you about to comment that you like her bag? I was about to say. <laughs> we didn't waste any time putting Matt in the middle of the madness. <laughs> I mean, he's an ex-marine psycho and some marriage counselor who's been married three times, and I'm sleeping in bed. <laughs> the first slip-up happened at lunch when Matt suggested prayer to the Bible-thumping virgin, Molly. Molly, I guess you uh, like to pray before you eat? It was good that he did that, because she, you know, she was just thinking, ooh, champagne. You know, she wasn't even thinking, oh yeah, that's right, I'm supposed to pray. We all have a lot to be thankful yeah. for. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> During the first pampering competition, Matt and the cast swapped underwear and hit the runway. Work it. Work it, you sexy bitch! After the game, Earl made a costly mistake by forgetting which underwear he was supposed to have worn and could have blown the entire show. Wait, which ones did you think were? Efficient. Those were yours. Those were yours. Yeah, weren't they? Yeah. But Dr. Pat quickly covered for him and saved the day. You had the blue one with the big fish in the front. I mean, we fixed it, but it was, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm surprised that he fell for it. The next day, during the hands on a high priced hunger immunity challenge, the first sign of Matt's unpredictability surfaced. And it was all set up so that it would be a battle of wills between Hutch and Matt at the end. He shocked everyone when he bowed out of the game by taking his hands off the hooker. I hate sharing the bed. And I won't do it another night. <gasps> After Matt quit the game, Hutch immediately started to show off his nasty side. He nearly spit on Ashley. Offended Molly. Don't be a jerk. What are you talking about? You're a slut. Look at you. And when Hutch laid into Kip, Matt came to the rescue as we had hoped. You can't even take a swimming lesson for crap. I don't want to learn how to swim. You're 26, 27 years old. Hey, Kip! Kip! Watch don't it. even respond! Yeah, well, you got the mat, man. He doesn't need to. <laughs> Kip played his role perfectly and handed the immunity to Hutch. Yes! I'm immune, baby. I'm immune. The next morning, Gina deliberately set up an alliance with Matt, just in time for the first Ridges to Rags eviction ceremony. I, I told him in the confessional room, like, I think you got a good shot at winning, and so do I. Yeah, I, I'm getting the same feeling. I was trying to plot with Matt, and literally everything I was about to say 
he comes to me and says it. And he's genuinely trying to form an alliance with Gina. I want to ride with you to the end. But Matt had no idea that his alliance with Gina was doomed from the start, as Kip and Ashley convinced Matt they had found Gina's backstabbing board. Though Matt refused to turn on Gina, things looked pretty bad for her. You found that board under your bed. I don't know if I can help you now. I know. I don't know if I can do it. One of you was about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence, working for the man. At the first eviction ceremony, Matt found his alliance with Gina in shambles. Gina. Gina. Gina, serve me your plate. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Gina, you're dead to us. Matt quickly figured out that Gina had betrayed him. He was furious. Listen, listen to me. It was, there was a vote for Molly, a vote right. for me, and seven for her. Right. Well, who the fuck do you think Gina voted for? Gina's not allowed to vote Gina. Gina fucking greased me. The next day, Matt's gag problem surfaced for the first time in the Battle of the Sexes. To add insult to injury pulls out the oil. Like, dude, to really, oh, Jesus. <laughs> what is going on? That is sick. The girls won a day at the spa, while the guys were forced to clean the mansion. Little did Matt know, it was all a setup for that evening's drama. Okay, who did this? Who did this? Dude, you're a fucking asshole. You're a fucking asshole, dude. If you ruin the pictures, you're a fucking asshole. Luckily, Dr. Pat was there to calm Matt down and take him to that happy place. There you go, there you go. Then came the beginning of a love triangle between Ralph, Molly, and Ashley, with a gift that keeps on giving, Headshots. That's an attractive photo. Yeah. Molly, you're as beautiful as you are, sweet. William is the luckiest guy in the world. All my love, Ralph. All oh, my love. Wow. <laughs> what did he say for you? Um, Ashley, best wishes, Ralph. Um, That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> to increase the tension, we had Ashley surprise Matt with a startling confession. I have a crush on. Oh, Ralph. I can't believe that you feel that way. It was never in my dreams that one of the members of the household would want to hook up or have a relationship with or date the host. So I'm a bit surprised by that. I mean, he's hot. Yeah, I do. No shit. Yeah. Soon after, Matt started plotting to evict Ashley. Do you guys know who you're going for tonight? But I'm not telling. You're not telling? I'll vote for Ashley if you guys want to. Let's do it. We're voting for Ashley. Some of us have decided to vote for Ashley. We're voting Ashley out tonight. Ashley's an ugly what you do. During the talent show, Matt beatboxed his way into our subconscious with his catchy rendition of an old Beethoven classic. America. The Hutch delivered a surprisingly moving performance and won immunity yet again. FYI, I pissed in the whirlpool last night. Earl, you're dead to us. Later that evening, Earl's eviction sent Matt on a downward spiral, putting the entire show in jeopardy. You gotta fucking stop this. When Matt collapsed on the stairs, I'm like, oh my god, this, this is no good. We can't do this to this guy. <laughs> Dude, nothing is worth this. No amount of money. It's not worth it, dude. Right now, with Earl's eviction, it really hit Matt hard, and uh, we don't know if the game's gonna continue. But it did continue. Find out how Matt and the actors recovered after the break. Later, how will Matt react when he discovers the truth? What? <laughs> what is going on? And then we'll take you behind the scenes to see how TV's most elaborate experiment was created. You can be a street walking jet spell. That's right, he did get away from my scrapbook. You were cockroaches. Tonight, 
Matt finally learns the truth. But first, let's continue our look back at what happened this season. The morning after Earl's eviction and Matt's breakdown, the producers made the decision to continue with the show. First off, we obviously had a very emotional reaction last night. We've turned some weird corner in this experiment that is our show. To release the tension, we set up a game called Sumo Slam. And the prize today is six nights and seven days at the Green Valley Spa in St. George, Utah. No one could have predicted what happened next when Matt leveled Dr. Pat. Our first winner! Wow. Hey y'all, she's crying, she's hurt. I guess it drove home that this was a wild card, this guy was not in on the joke, and that we had to watch ourselves not only in terms of the performances and keeping the secret, but also physically, because you don't know when you're doing stunts and games like this that are so physical what can happen. After a trip to the hospital, Dr. Pat returned unscathed, and Matt made it up to her with an offer she couldn't refuse. I want you to please take my seven day stay to Utah. No, no. I said don't oh, say no. I started <laughs> off by saying serious? don't say no, and there is no question about it, you will take the trip. Okay? Yeah. In that night's immunity challenge, Matt withstood the ultimate distraction, a naked Brian, and became master debater finally claiming the immunity robe as we had planned. You are wearing the immunity robe tonight. However, during the eviction ceremony, Matt discovered he had given away a lot more than a trip to Utah. Dr. Pat, you can choose to accept this one-time offer of $25,000 if you will leave the mansion tonight voluntarily. I think we can all agree that this show has surprised us in the fact that Money is not the most important thing. Um, I think I've met some people here that I will be friends with for the rest of my life. So, I mean, I'm gonna just take the money. A lot of people might think that because I gave the Sumo Slam prize away that I might be upset. And I just wanna say, not at all. The next day, money, 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 honey, brought out the worst in Ralph and uncontrollable laughter in Matt. <laughs> I am fucking sorry. Stop. I'm sorry. Stop it. The cast rolled in honey to collect cash. Oh, on your back. Your boobs have the most surface area. Come on, let's go. Let's get it. As scripted, Kip and Ashley won, and Matt and Molly lost. And as punishment, you two will remain handcuffed for the remainder of the day. Matt was exactly where he wanted to be, but more importantly, where we needed him to be. Sorry to Molly's parents, maybe you don't know, but she is built amazingly. I mean, that's what God gave her. So when we sent in William, Molly's boyfriend, for a surprise visit. Molly, cupcake, you're the girl for me. Matt was dragged into our lover's quarrel. Whoa. It is so good to see you. I'm just gonna go. No, here. Can we stop, please, for a second? We're in a bikini in a hot tub when you're chained to a guy. I'm not, no offense. I'm, thank you. I appreciate it. Matt it's pleaded with William. No, William, it looks William, like don't choice. leave like this, no, dude. What? But quickly realized that another man's loss could be his gain. It's probably a slut. Yeah, you well might then let's go leave. back in the hot tub then. It didn't take long for Molly to find comfort in another man's arms. Molly. <laughs> Later that day, the Hutch confirmed Matt's foot phobia. Hutch, so that shit is gonna stop when you're around me. I can honestly say it just, it's just frustrating with Hutch sometimes because he crosses lines. <laughs> that evening's immunity challenge presented Matt with an interesting dilemma, his love of hot women and his hatred of chocolate. Oh, I can't, I can't, I want to, and I can't. To Matt's chagrin, Ashley won immunity. And at that night's eviction ceremony, the twist kept turning for Matt when Hutch was kicked off the show for threatening Kip. Fuck this cocksucking show. Goodbye. Everyone celebrated Hutch's departure with a good old fashioned pillow fight. But the fun was short lived as the next day brought yet another big twist. Basically what it means is this. The Hutch is back in the house. With the hutch back in the house, the group settled in for their next pampering game, a meal not quite fit for a king. 
The pressure was on Matt to win flat screen TVs for everyone, but a pile of dog crap put a damper on his enthusiasm. No, 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 no. Oh, man. <laughs> As we had planned, Matt took his fecal problem up with our fake network executive to work out an enticing arrangement. I need you to go down there and convince them to kiss, all right? If they won't do topless, then see if they'll kiss. Matt presented his case to the girls. Obviously, our whole reason for being here <laughs> goes much deeper than people wanting this nine of us to have a good time. As predicted, Matt was a strong negotiator, and the girls gave him and everyone else exactly what he asked for. Ashley stood Molly up and um, gave her a big kiss, and I thought it was unreal, unfreaking believable. In the next immunity challenge, the Virgin Molly finally came out of her uh, shell. Playing up his fear of water, Kip made sure his team had no chance of winning. Now Kip is overcoming a giant obstacle here. He's scared of water. I'm gonna throw you in the freaking pool. Every opportunity I can. Don't even say that. I will, dude. You're not gonna throw me in the pool because I, I can't swim. So he don't. Can't swim. You can't threaten okay. me like this. Come on, Kip, you can do this. Go, Kip. Come on. Thanks to Kip's terrible swimming display, Matt and the Hutch won immunity as planned. With Matt and Hutch safe, Kip and Molly were evicted that night. Unfortunately for Matt, his romantic dreams evaporated when Molly got a very special goodbye from the host. Then there were four. And yet another twist. A surprise eviction was announced the next day. We will be having a special sudden death eviction ceremony directly after lunch. After countless attempts, Matt finally got to see his nemesis Ashley evicted. That left Matt, Brian, and Hutch buying for the $100,000 grand prize. In the final eviction ceremony, the return of the ousted cast members took Matt by surprise, and so did their questions. If you were uh, captured by an enemy force, starved and beaten, abused physically and sexually and mentally and tortured, would you give up information to the enemy about your men and your country? And part two, what was your favorite game in the house? Then it was time to cast the final votes for the winner of Lap of Luxury. Gentlemen, the decision has been made. Who will win Lap of Luxury? Find out when we return for the climax of the season finale of The Joe Schmo Show. Coming up, the big reveal. How will Matt react when he learns the truth? What? <laughs> what is going on? And later, we go behind the scenes and see the actors' first uh, auditions. If you feel sad, cry. If you are happy, you should cry as well. For the first time, I'm starting to think that there is a chance that I can win this game. How is he going to react? Is he going to be pissed at us because we lied to him and we deceived him? his like entire reality is gonna just completely flip around on him. Anything could happen. Gentlemen, the decision has been made. Housemates. I'll call on you one at a time. Please stand up, explain to us why you voted the way you did, and then reveal your vote. 
Ashley, let's begin with you. I believe that he is the only one that has any potential. One vote, touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ashley. Kip. Wow. Well, this was not a very hard decision, I have to say. This person made me laugh. He made me cry. And he protected me when I really needed it. And my vote is Roman. One vote Hutch, one vote Matt. Molly. Um, I chose this person because no matter what the situation, he could always lighten the mood just by opening up his mouth. So, Brian. Wow. One vote Hutch. One Matt, and one Brian. Gina. Well, I'd like to say that I have respect for the fact that all of you made it this far. That's something I respect. Um, but I did vote for the candidate who I feel never lost sight of the true focus of why they were here, which is to play the game. And um, my vote's for the Hutch. That's two votes for Hutch one for Matt and one for Brian. Earl, please. <clears throat> I voted for the man that I think is squared away and strack, period. Matt. Two votes for Hutch, two votes for Matt, one for Brian. Lastly, we'll ask Dr. Pat, and potentially, this could be the deciding vote unless there's a three-way tie, so we'll have to see. Dr. Pat. Um, I feel like the person that I voted for is the most real. The person who has been not only true to himself, but true to all of us, and um, deserves this the most. And um, also who gave me three consecutive orgasms. <laughs> I'd like to vote for the Hutch. Hutch, you're the winner. Hutch is the winner of Lap of Luxury. Oh, bring it on. One hundred thousand dollars. Everyone, one second, please. We have a problem. All right, well, one second. One second, Hutch, I'm sorry. Hutch. OK, no problem. David, Ralph, what's up? Ralph, I got a problem. Listen, I just got a call. This background didn't check out. One of the people is into the basics. All right, all right. All right, I'm sorry for the interruption. Um, uh, Hutch, we're gonna have to uh, reset. There has apparently been a major violation of the rules. It means someone in this room is not who they say they are. So before we go any further, does anyone have anything they'd like to say? The moment you've waited all season for. What is going on? Someone in this room is not who they say they are. 
So before we go any further, does anyone have anything they'd like to say? My name's not the Hodge. My name is David Hornsby. And I'm an actor. I live in Los Angeles. Are you kidding me? You have ruined this whole show. Well, don't blame me. Ask him. Ask me what? What about him? I don't know what you're talking about. Please. All right, I'm, I'm an actor too, and uh, I wasn't honest about it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you know what? It's not just me and him. You know, everyone else here is, just, you know, come on guys, raise your hand if you're an actor as well, please. I mean, come on, let's be honest about this. What? Matt? <laughs> Every... <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Matt? Are you freaking kidding? <laughs> Matt? Are you an actor? Everything I told you about my life and my family what? and me is all true. <laughs> my name is? is? Everything is true. Everything Are you an I actor, you. dude? Are you an actor? Are you an actor? Everything I Hold told you phone. about my life. Are you an actor? Tell me, just say it. I am. What the heck is going on? Someone fill me in. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. There's something we've been meaning to tell you. What's that? The only real thing on this reality show is you. Oh my God. <laughs> What? That's not that's not completely true. That's not completely true. What? Because the prizes are also real as well. And in fact, they're all yours. Right. I can't believe it! I can't! Remember, I mean, I... Matt, you remember the spa vacation you gave to Dr. Pat? Yes. That's yours. Remember the trip to Tahiti that you thought you didn't win? Yeah. That's yours. What? The flat screen TV? Yours. But finally, and certainly not least, this check <laughs> made out to you for $100,000. I can't believe it! Matt, I think we owe you an explanation. <laughs> Matt, everything, everything you experienced in this house, from your housemates, to the game results, to the eviction votes, it was all very carefully planned and brought to life by these amazing 10 actors and hundreds of very hardworking people. All for you. It was all for you, buddy. <laughs> Ask me now that where I won, where I'm gonna go. Where are you gonna, gonna, gonna go? go? I'm going to Pittsburgh! <laughs> wait, 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 wait! The lap of luxury, the this lap of luxury is, is the world's most elaborate cover story. What it is, is that you're now the star of your own TV show. <laughs> We searched, we searched far and wide all over America to find the warmest, kindest, most genuine man we could. And that man is going to go from being the nice guy next door to TV's brightest new star. And that guy yeah. is Matt Kennedy Gould. The truth is, we don't even know our own names. <laughs> um, 
You know, I just have to say while well, everyone's quiet, like, you know, and I was going to say this anyway when I thought you were all who you said you were. Um, you know, I went, I went to a basketball game. You know, I was having a hard time. And I went to a game, you know, in a bad neighborhood at home. And, you know, I just I walked in there and there was the casting director, you know, saying, do you want to be on a reality TV show, you know? And, like, of course, you all know me. I don't know you, but you know me. <laughs> I'm a ham. So, of course, you know, I got on the camera that day and I messed around and just had fun. And then the whirlwind began. And, um, you know, what it is, what the most amazing thing about it all is, is that there's, there's people out there you know, people who saw things in me that sometimes I can't see in myself. We know? all saw it. We all saw it, man. <laughs> we all saw it. You're a hell of a guy. Welcome, we love you, man. We love you. <laughs> it's just so amazing, man. It's just so amazing. And I feel bad if I did anything to <laughs> oh! I couldn't fucking believe the Hutch one, man. I, couldn't believe it. I, tr I tried to be gracious about it, but I thought, this asshole after everything he won. Are you kidding me? I'm cold as hell. Next, Matt meets the actors out of character for the first time. Dude, are you at least gay? And coming up, the shocking moment that almost stopped the show. Very intense. He's looking around. We're thinking, oh, fuck, he knows. He knows. He totally knows. Listen. Oh, shit. Then later, we'll talk to Matt for the first time since he learned the truth. A little did I know, those fucking assholes. Ow. <laughs> Really, I can't thank you all enough. Yeah. Earl, man, tell me, please, were you in the Marines? Everything I told you on this show was absolutely the true part of my life. I am me, but I'm an actor. Okay. And your real name is? I'm Frank Jones. Frank, meet Frank. <laughs> Can I meet all of you again now? <laughs> Brian, what's your real name? Brian Keith Brian. Etheridge. Brian. Brian Etheridge, thank you. Your name is? Steve Ireland. Steve. And I think you scared me more than I scared you. <laughs> I handled the hell out of him up in that room. That's what he told us. I'm Ryan Raddatz, man. That's Ryan Raddatz. I'm Ralph. I really am Ralph. You're Ralph Garman, Garman okay? I'm Nikki Davis. Nikki Davis. Nikki Davis. I'm Matt. I'm David Hornsby. David Hi, Hornsby. David. <laughs> you smelly bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. Angela Dodson. <laughs> <laughs> this is your cast, man. Dude, are you at least gay? No. <laughs> 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 I love him anyway! <laughs> Ashley? Melissa Yvonne Lewis. Oh. <laughs> she's not a bitch. No, she's not. Oh, she's not a bitch. She was so bitchy on the show, though. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Right. Dr. Pat is not a doctor. No. No. She never was. <laughs> My name's Kristen Wick. Well, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> Now, all you camera people and sound people that I've learned to love, They're that's your real. real names, They're, right? The crew is real. Okay. The crew is real. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and the check, the check is real. Is that was clear. Real. The check is real. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I just need to tell it. you now, and I'll be telling you this for the remainder of the time we spend together, I'm not a big tool. I know you kept saying what a tool I am. <laughs> I'm really a very nice guy when you get to know, I know me. Man. I, I was just trying to have some fun. <laughs> I bet you must be and thinking. And we're really not romantically encumbered. No. So there's a chance for us. <laughs> <laughs> now that you got a hundred grand, <laughs> all this for me, man. I this is all for you. Room. All for you. Now you must be thinking. What were these guys thinking and doing and saying while they're all busy pretending to be other people? <laughs> so we put together some clips of how we all really feel about you. Watch this. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, we're good. Matt Kennedy Gould is a good man. You know, I, I feel like we could be friends. And uh, I just feel like he's just an earnest guy. Matt, I apologize for any, anything we put you through. You understand, all right? He's the sweetest thing. I mean, he is the sweetest thing. Bless his heart, you know? That's all I, I, I just look at him and I'm like, oh my gosh, we already love you. 
I do think that you are probably one of the most amazing guys that I've ever met. And you're very cute too. Those eyes, I could totally get lost in them. All I have to say is if this were a real reality show, you'd probably be in trouble. Matt, I love you. You're an amazing person and you've surprised everyone on this project with how big your heart is and what an amazing, genuine person you are. I just wish you the best of luck in the whole world and I just want you to know that you deserve every great thing that's gonna happen to you into your life. Love you. <laughs> Matt, I gotta tell you, I threw my best at you. And you never really batted an eye. You took it all in, uh, in good humor and I was impressed by that. You kept your cool and I appreciate that. Mostly because you're bigger than me and I wouldn't want you to throw a punch. Matt said, I don't not even here for the money. I just kind of wanted to come hang. And we were like, oh God, he's just great. He's really sweet, really, really sweet. Matt's a, a, he's, he's a genuine guy. You know what, you're, you're right on the path, man. You're 27 and you've done things other kids haven't done. You completed college, you started law school. You know, you've achieved, but uh, he really can't see that in himself. And I just like to tell him, you know what? You're better than 95% of the youth out there, man. You're a good guy. When we did that Kiss the Ugly Frog, um, we each took our, our opportunity to sort of, within character, tell him how much we really liked him, but the words that we were using were our words. We're all blown away by who you are, by your personality, by the choices that you're making. You're a great person, really great person. I mean that. I really mean that. I want you to know that. Matt Kennedy Gold is maybe He's top five of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. I mean, he's, he's a, just a great guy. I mean, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. I want to say this to Matt. Matt, you uh, genuinely, I'm your friend. I would be this guy's friend anywhere. <laughs> the power of I have no life, okay? <laughs> God. It's all for you, man. It's all for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations. You deserve it. You deserve it. Matt, tonight you're going to be spending some time getting to know the real us as we kind of hang out here at the mansion. We're going to still going to live in the lap of luxury at least for a little while. But tomorrow night, you're going to find yourself in the true lap of luxury because you're going to be a special guest as we take you to the Spike TV kickoff party that's going to be held at the one and only Playboy Mansion. Oh. <laughs> we thought that was something you might enjoy. Congratulations, Dan. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have nothing to say. It's the most, <laughs> come on. It's unfreaking believable, man. I can't believe Kip's not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, neither can we. I've been spending some time with him. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> so what are you going to do now that you, you've got this money, you've got your own TV show? Hell, the sky's the limit for you. What are your plans? God, right now I just want to... Uh, See my mother and my father yeah, you tell about and this. my sister and my nieces and nephews and my boys, the racer and Jim, uh, every other one of my basketball friends. I mean, I just want to, for a while, I just want to go home. <laughs> well, not just yet, not just yet. You got to go to the mansion first. You got to go meet Hefner first. You know what I said, what I was going to do, you know, I'm going to invest this right and give it to my folks. and. Oh, you guys don't understand how insane this is. Coming up, all the Joes that got rejected. Yeah. Go, go! As we go behind the scenes. And Matt lashes out about this. <laughs> it wasn't in any of my contracts that I had to eat dog shit. Congratulations. We were all impressed by how well you stand up for yourself and for other yeah. people, like for Kip. How you yeah. really, you make the right choice so yeah. often. It's incredible. I, I, I mean, that's a credit to, you know, what I come from. Sure. T-Bird, you know, my sure. parents. <laughs> that's where it comes from. All we have to do is watch you and we know where you mm -hmm. come from. Well, Matt, there's some people that would love to meet you. Come on, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, your newest TV star, 
Matt Kennedy Gould. Say hello to the people who work for you. Central. This is how we tracked every movement you made all over the mansion not the entire in the time. Not no, not in the bathroom, no. We gave you a little private time, but every other moment was pretty much watched and documented, and we took it, and we schemed, and we figured, and we plotted, and we planned, and we, uh, we wrote a little show around you. I hope you don't mind. That's, that's fine. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing how much you like to know people's names, you're going to be busy all night long, Matt. <laughs> Because literally it took hundreds of people to pull this off and we could not be happy, really couldn't, that, that you're as happy as you are that we did it for you. Because we never know with you. You never know how you're going to react, Matt. I almost want to smash it. No, I won't. Today uh, was weird because when Hutch won, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was really odd. Uh, yeah, it's insane. Head great. back in the mansion and party. But you can sleep wherever you want. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep my bed. I like it just. <laughs> and hopefully, Molly uh, will join me. <laughs> Let's go this way. Let's we'll show you the secret door that you yeah. wanted to walk out there. Walk out? So long, um, yeah. I think it's safe to say that Matt Kennedy Gould had the experience of a lifetime. Well, we couldn't have done it without Matt. And we're about to sit down with the star of our show. That's right, Matt Kennedy Gould is coming up next. We're gonna ask him some of the juicy questions you've been wondering, and we're also gonna take you behind the scenes on The Joe Schmo Show, The Aftermath. Stick around. Coming up, we show Matt for the first time how The Joe Schmo Show was put together. That's what you people are, you're cockroaches. I had a very difficult time at those freaking ceremonies. And they didn't. Then, how did Matt feel about this? <laughs> it wasn't in any of my contracts that I had to eat dog shit. And we show him the shocking moment that almost stopped the show. We're thinking, oh fuck, he knows, he knows, he totally knows. Even if he says, hey, I know it's all fake, you still deny it. You deny it to the end of the earth. Then there were the ladies. Yeah, well, I right. just wanted some good American fun. Matt reveals which cast member he really wanted, and it's not who you think it is. And the shock of the big reveal is worn off, and Matt tells us how he really feels about being Joe Schmo. It is bothersome in some way. Now I gotta know, how close did you actually get to figuring it out? Earlier on the season finale of The Joe Schmo Show, the evicted housemates voted. Come on, Brian, for the hutch. I'd like to vote for the Hutch. Hutch is the winner of Lack of Luxury. Yeah! But Hutch's victory was short-lived. Everyone, one second, please. We have a problem. It means someone in this room is not who they say they are. Then, the final twist. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm an actor. I live in Los Angeles. And finally, the truth was revealed to Matt. Come on, guys, raise your hand if you're an actor as well. Please, I mean, come on. Let's be honest about this. What? <laughs> what is going on? There's something we've been meaning to tell you. What's that? The only real thing on this reality show is you. <laughs> Matt discovered he was the star of his own TV show and was awarded the grand prize. For 100 thousand dollars is yours. Yeah. 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 
Welcome to the Joe Schmo Show, The Aftermath. I'm Ralph Garman, the real Ralph Garman, not to be confused with that guy who hosted Lap of Luxury. Ultimately, Matt learned what America knew all along, that he was the only real thing on this reality show. And so, I proudly present the man of the hour himself, Matt Kennedy Gould. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Have a seat. Well, a little time has gone by. You've had a chance to let this kind of sink in. What are your thoughts? You know, I'm, just, I'm in shock. Um, I, I can't believe that the whole show was based around me. Uh, You're living in this house for 10 days with all these people that you think are castmates just like yourself. And then in one crazy moment, you realize that nothing in that world was real. Right. What, what moment, what was that like for you? <laughs> It was the most shocking moment of my life, um, by far. The only real thing on this reality show is you. Oh my God. <laughs> I was so like, overwhelmed with everything. Like, I just, I didn't really even believe it. And then you lean back and you pull out this giant check. And it was like to realize that all these, all this work and all these people and all this money is here around you. Like people took such chances on you. You know that's amazing. You said all during the show that it was never about the money, but what do you plan to do with that hundred grand? Because you do have some money now. All of it, every cent is going to my mother. We're gonna, you know, get a financial investor and, you know, build an empire. Try to, you know. Build an empire, man. MKG, baby. <laughs> no, um, I'm going to treat it wisely. That's what I'm going to do with it. And I'm going to see Fish a little bit. Fish the band. You're going to follow them around? A little bit. That's cool. OK, Matt, now we want to let you in on all the details of what it took to put the show together. Take a look. You know, it took hundreds of hardworking people over a year to make this show happen. Testing, testing. Of all the challenges we faced while making this show, finding you was the hardest. <laughs> for weeks, we searched the nation for a guy that would embody our vision of Joe Schmo. We talked to guys who were articulate. Yeah, I tend to be kind of a polarizing figure at times. And to guys who weren't. Oh, God! Yeah. We tried narrowing the field using word association games. Donald Trump. Money. Referee. Underpaid. Sugar. Try to stay away from it, actually. We even saw a guy who could dance. <laughs> and a few who couldn't. Some of the guys gave us too much information. Not a big streaker, more of a flasher. And some didn't give us any. But when we met you playing basketball in Pittsburgh, we knew we'd found our guy. I'm going to get on this show and win the 100. No, I, I'm not quite sure. Up, I'm not quite sure. Actually, this is a blessing in disguise because <laughs> I think that you know my personality will outshine a lot of the others on tape. Believe it or not, I'm a great dancer. I'm gonna drop a beat. Dance that became legendary. <laughs> yeah, I can really dance. He's awesome. Then, when you came out to LA for those final auditions, we wanted to see how you'd handle some uncomfortable situations. <laughs> Matt, nice to, nice to meet you too. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> but I might start now. <laughs> and I'm sure you remember when we introduced you to your future buddy Brian. I don't think so. I don't know. I hope not because I've been sitting here picking my nose and watching TV when they told me not to. <laughs> You were the perfect guy for the show, so that's when we sent a producer to your home. You've just been cast on Laugh of Love. Oh, wow, <laughs> all right. That's, that's crazy, <laughs> thanks a lot. My parents. I'm happy for him. I think this is something that he'll really enjoy. Take it for all it's worth. <laughs> I'm feeling those butterflies for him. So I'm hopeful that he does well. I'm happy. I needed a break. I got it. Next, we had to find the actors to play those quirky reality show characters I mean, you had to live with. Uh, this is confusing for you, this is embarrassing. If you feel sad, cry. If you are happy, you should cry as well. They said I had 
anger issues, uh, whatever the hell that means. Um, I want, frankly, want to beat the crap out of him. It took months of auditions, but we narrowed it down to eight. Some were so good, it was scary. I'm trained to do a job, and I do my job very well. And the only thing you feel when you take a human life is recoil. Boom. Now that we had found you and the eight actors, the show was ready to begin. While the house was being dressed, equipment tested, and surveillance cameras installed, the final rehearsals with the actors were underway. About here is going to be a table. There's going to be two sets of risers. Let's do uh, Gina's eviction first. For the past two days, I think it's safe to say you've all enjoyed life in the lap of luxury. But for one of you, the vacation's now over. One of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence of working for the man. Teeny weeny rat eat bugs and cockroaches. And that's what you people are. You're cockroaches. You're cockroaches. That shit was rare. I said, you heard what I said. I said, you're cockroaches. That's right. He did get away from my scrapbook. That's not my problem. This one is getting all worked up. Is it hard to watch this? It is bothersome in some ways. Seeing some of those scenes was bothersome to you. Definitely. Why is that? Right. You know, I had a very difficult time at those freaking ceremonies. Yes, you did. And they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, in one sense of it, I'm so glad, and I would have it no other way than to be the center of my own show. Right. But at the same time, like, I thought I was experiencing all that with eight other people. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot different. Like, we were never in the same boat. Let's talk about that. You met eight fake people while you were living in that house. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you met eight real people. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to reconcile the old personalities with the new personalities? Did you have to relearn everybody, sort of? Yeah, uh, some people. The hardest one is Brian, because I got so close to him on the show. And like, I will always remember thinking or asking Brian, you know, are you an actor? Are you an actor? Are you an actor? Everything I Hold told you phone. about my life. Are you an actor? Tell me, just say it. I am. What the fuck? I wanted Brian to be a real person mm -hmm. so bad. Brian was the one person that I knew I could trust. The one person who was on my side, who was in the same position as me. Right. No, wrong. <laughs> he wasn't. You know what I mean? Like now, sure, uh, sure. a little while but later. But at the time. Little did I know, Brian was not only, was not only uh, an actor, but he was also a writer. Right. I mean, it went much deeper with him. And you know, this, now we're getting into the whole like resentment I have towards Brian <laughs> that I need to work out before we continue our friendship. I can understand that. Let's keep watching. Every cast and crew member had their assignments by the time rehearsals finished knowing full well the show could be blown if anyone took a wrong step. The key word is denial. Even if he says, hey, I know it's all fake, I know this is bullshit, you're all actors, you still deny it. You deny it to the end of the earth. The deny, North deny, North. deny, 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 deny. <laughs> wow. This is really cool. So all those are a different camera? This is, these are all surveillance. The control room was the nerve center of the mansion. Each screen had a video feed from one of the 26 cameras located throughout the house. The monitors were instrumental in tracking your every move. Because the actors couldn't be directed in front of you, they were almost always flying solo. Okay, run downstairs. Let them, let them know. No one can publish us on kids. Run in downstairs. The only time they could be given any information was if they were pulled aside in the privacy of their room. It's going to disgust you. You're out of here. You come in here, and that's when you're going to find Gina's prank. The script was in a constant state of flux as it changed repeatedly to fit your emotional state. After months of preparation, the one thing the cast and crew were not prepared for was how your emotions would affect every one of them sitting in the control room watching. Someone is looking down on me. Because when you were happy, they were happy. Yeah, what cares? the fuck are you talking about, dude? Couple? When you were angry, they were angry. <laughs> and when you were having the time of your life, so were they. <laughs> 
In the end, the months of hard work finally paid off when we let you in on the big secret. Wait, 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 wait. Ask me now that where I won, where I'm gonna go. We're gonna go. I'm going to Pittsburgh! <laughs> How about that? Wow. How does it feel knowing that all these people put all this work into creating a world just for you? I, I'd like to take issue with that statement a little bit. All right. Um, originally, someone wanted to create a cool show, so someone did just that, right? Well, then someone wanted to buy a cool show, so someone did that. Right. And then people keep saying, like, we did this all for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I want to say, like, they didn't come find me and then think of all this. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the, conceptually speaking, I mean, they thought of the idea and then plugged me in there. Now, it happened to work out for me and hopefully for them as well. How do you feel about being referred to as Joe Schmo? Not a big fan of the yeah. name. You know, uh, your whole life you use it, you know, that dude's a Schmo. Mm -hmm. Who is a some freaking Schmo? I don't even know who he is. You know, and then here I am, Joe Schmo. Um, but, you know, Ralph, there couldn't be a better Schmo. Small price to pay. Huh? It is, man, it is a very small price to pay. Next, we'll revisit one of Matt's favorite moments, the meal not quite fit for a king. Remember that? That's right, dog crap, monkey testicles, and a girl-on-girl -girl kiss when the Joe Schmo Show continues. Coming up, Matt lashes out about this. <laughs> It wasn't in any of my contracts that I had to eat dog shit. Welcome back to the aftermath of the Joe Schmo Show. I'm Ralph Garman, and I'm sitting here talking with our star, Matt Kennedy Gould. Matt, you lived every scene in our show. But before you lived them, we planned them, sometimes months in advance. Now, have you ever tried to replay the whole show in your head and figure out exactly how we put the whole thing together? From beginning to end, not yet. No. Um, haven't had the time to do that yet. But, you know, I replay scenarios in my mind, you know, pretty much from like about 15, 20 minutes after I wake up until about <laughs> that much time before I go to bed. Um, well, Matt, let's take an in-depth look at the evolution of one of our scenes, from a table read of the script to rehearsals to the scene itself. Matt, I think you'll remember a meal not quite fit for a king. Okay, now uh, we launch into a thing that's called a meal not fit for a king, and the cast members must, must each finish one course of an eight-course meal. He's going to freak out from the, from the start of the game, from, from the watching. name of the game, he's going to freak out. And the host but that's fine. I, I'm okay with that. The casting director assured me that uh, I would never have to, when I came here, I would never have to eat anything nasty. I have a, a well-documented <laughs> gag problem. The last final... Meal number six, bring it on in. You can pick this dish up pretty much on any street. In fact, in some places, they'll fine you if you don't. Canine feces. Is it really dog shit? Yes, it's really gonna be dog shit. Well, I, at first we really wanted to serve him the actual dog dog feces. Is your only fear that he's going to eat the dog shit? Because what he's not. Do you think it's possible that he's going to pull out from the beginning? Be like, I'm out. No. We have no intention whatsoever of letting him ever put that in his mouth. He screws us every time because he comes up with something we're not planning on. Well, we, we got word from the network that they were a little worried that Matt just might actually take a bite before we were able to get the dish away from him. You can get screwed either by him diving into it, which I realize we all feel will not happen. And that's where Bob came in. We presented him with the challenge of creating a very realistic looking pile of dog feces. That was basically a liverwurst with some unsweetened chocolate mixed in. I think the biggest challenge for Bob was the smell. But he went out and found it, oh, and he found yeah. it in a novelty shop. And uh, I think for the, for the end product would have fooled just about anybody. If he goes for it, Brian's gonna, or one of you is gonna throw it. Anyone, yeah. anyone who's yeah. nearest. Yeah. Yeah. No, this nothing TV ridiculous. show is worth this. Wait, wait, wait. There's no way in hell they're gonna serve me real dog feces. I think once the smell hit him and everybody, and the reactions of all of our other actors, uh, I think we got him. I think we got him pretty good. If it's real, like, this game's over. Now I gotta know, would you really have taken a bite of that dog crap? 
yeah, if it meant winning no. TVs for everybody. <laughs> no. no, no, I wouldn't have. And the sheer, um, the bottom line of that is, is like I, I'm not able to do that. Right. Um, we know your gag reflex is pretty legendary. I have a strong gag reflex. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And my thinking was, I looked back and I saw one of the producers, Mike Miller, who we just saw, um, and he wasn't even looking at me. He wasn't even looking at me, and it was people were arguing, like, is this really dog feces? Mm -hmm. And like, he kind of was like, it's dog feces, and there's nothing we can do about it, without ever looking at me. That little thing like made it even less likely that I was going to figure things out. The director decides to turn the cameras off for a moment. Once he does, the host openly sympathizes with the cast. He begins to mediate between the cast and the producers. You know, if I get in my ear, like, hold on a second. All right. There's somebody from net from the network here who's willing to talk about this. Yes. Excuse me, David. Yes. You know, Matt, of course. Good, yeah, Matt, how are you? Hi. David Decker. Nice pleasure. Please have a seat. So, I got called out to drive out to Westlake Village because they say there's a problem. Oh, I don't think it's really a, a problem, but I don't know. I guess canine feces can make you ill. Um, I don't want to eat it, and I won't. Technically, we can hold you guys in violation of your contract, okay? Let's just stop the situation right there. Matt spent some time in law school, plus he took some classes on debating. He's the perfect person to stare down a network executive. We also know that Matt has problems with authority, so sparks are about to fly. If you want to hold me in violation of my contract, please feel scary. free to do so. It's not where I'm going. Man. Okay, but That's that is what going. you said. And you bringing up the fact about violation just infuriates me inside. I'm a guy from Pittsburgh. I'll go back. If you want to hold me in violation of my contract, but like that is not the way to set up a nice rapport between us. That's is that good. what you want? I mean... No, what I want is ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Got a point? Can you tell us a little bit more about what was funny about that scene for you? It wasn't in any of my contracts that I had to eat dog shit. <laughs> At least, Something I didn't, like that would the stand fine out, print, I, don't, I didn't read all the fine print, but no, I mean, in terms of contract law, or in terms of the show, like, I didn't have to eat that thing. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I could not eat it and not win the TVs, and that's okay. Right. So yeah, that situation was odd, but again, I mean, digressing, I chalked it up to, you know, you folks just wanting me to... You know, to put me in a position where some of the skills that I brought to the table were highlighted. Right. Um, and they were, because we got you to the point where you got to present the new ideas to the girls at the table. Oh, which was either they go topless or they kiss. The choices are either you two go topless or you two kiss. I'm not going topless. But well, you guys can kiss. Can you what kiss? What about a quick kiss? And I would play a little bit of the comedy, a comedy, Ashley, of you really don't want to kiss Molly. You don't like her. You're pissed at her. Well, I can tell you I certainly don't want to kiss you. Well, I don't want to kiss you either. I don't even like you. Stand up. Make sure you get this shit. Guys, can set this kiss. I was praying on the inside that they were going to kiss. Ashley stood Molly up and, um, gave her a big kiss and I thought it was unreal, unfreaking believable. Okay, you get your TVs now. Matt has saved the day. Nice job, devil dog. I think he actually wanted to see them both topless and kissing. Now the truth can be told, Matt. Were you kind of hoping that they would agree to the topless part? Do you think there was a chance that they might? You know, Ralph, you know I've never had any qualms. But you know I love women, mm -hmm. and I, I, I love breasts, as, as we probably know. Um, yeah. yeah, I was hoping for the topless. Um, I mean, I mean, hope is such a light word. Uh, <laughs> pray. Pray. <laughs> um, I had all, all of my toes crossed in my shoes that you guys didn't see. But, you know, I had to put that there pretty diplomatically, didn't I? You did. You played it cool. Yeah. I, this is bigger than all of us. I remember me yeah, saying that. Yeah, that was great. Well, dog crap wasn't the only thing Matt had trouble swallowing. Find out more when The Joe Schmo Show continues. <laughs> Coming up, the shocking moment that almost stopped the show. It's very intense. He's looking around. We're thinking, oh, fuck, he knows. He knows. He totally knows. <laughs> Welcome back to the aftermath of the Joe Schmo Show. 
Now, Matt, as you can imagine, one of the toughest things for us to do on this show was to keep things secret from you. And in spite of our best efforts, we did have some near misses and some narrow escapes. Take a look. The first near miss came after the game, These Drawers Aren't Yours, when Earl forgot which boxer shorts were supposed to be his. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it to the first day within the first two hours. I thought yours were the fishing ones. Wait, which ones did you think were? The fishing. Those were yours. No. Yeah, the green ones with the, uh... You had the, you had the blue one with the big fish in the front. <laughs> Then, Molly forgot where she lived and bit her tongue to distract you. When I lived in Texas, I was in Beaumont, which is an hour and a half from Houston. Why do, we should wait, have a why do you live in Wisconsin? Here. I'm like, oh my god, I just blew the show. It's over. I'm fired. <laughs> I just bit my tongue. See, this stuff was so much it's more. Hard. It seemed so much more to you guys than it did to me. Really? Like, I just was getting biographical information. You know what I mean? Sure. But the close call that had us most concerned actually happened behind the scenes. Every day, we would interview the actors about the progress of their character's story. The interview room was located directly next to your master suite and separated only by very thin doors. Because of the closeness of the rooms, we risked that at any time you could overhear one of these interviews. And to avoid a disaster, we had to carefully monitor your every move. It was during an interview with Kip that we had our scariest moment. Where's Matt right now? Because I'm interviewing Kip uh, upstairs in the interview room. I was uh, talking to Kip out of character, speaking not with a Cuban accent, <laughs> straight as an arrow. Where's Matt? Show me Matt. Matt, where's Matt? Give me, you don't give me Matt. As it turns out, Matt's in the uh, master in the bathroom, and I'm like, what? You probably don't remember, but you left the kitchen for an apparent visit to the downstairs bathroom. To allow you privacy, we shut off your video feed in the control room only to realize too late that you had gone upstairs to the master suite, directly next to the room where Kip was being interviewed. The executive wow. producer, Paul, called Kip's interview short and called Brian outside for an emergency meeting. We need, we need to find out if we heard him, like, just get a feel for what's going on okay. in the moment. Okay, okay. I'm fucking nervous. Yeah, and that is, let me that tell you, that thing is fucking talking. paper thin. Oh, he doesn't look so good right there. Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's scared to death. And we had to watch the monitors in the control room to see if you figured it out. Huh? Mm -hmm. He's very intense. He's looking around. We're thinking, oh, fuck, he knows. He knows. He totally knows. Shh. Is there something wrong? What does he say? When you asked Brian and Earl to go upstairs, we were sure you were going to tell them one of two things. Either you knew everything, or you knew Kip was a phony. Either way, we were certain we had a problem. We're going to Ashley out tonight. Huh? We're going to Ashley out tonight. You can eat both for either Hodge or Ashley. Wow. You have no idea how relieved we were when we found out you were just playing the game and trying to vote Ashley out. Oh, that was close. That's the closest call. Okay. Okay. So funny. It's so much like that wasn't even on my mind. I still think there's about a 20% chance he does now and he's just playing us now. How close did you actually get to figuring it out? Like on a scale of one to 10, like 10 being figuring out and one being like having no idea, like a three. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sorry that you guys went through all that, but everyone else's perception of the way things were going to be taken by me was so paranoid, okay? Everybody from, you know, the guy up here to, you know, the lowest guy down here, you know, on your side of the fence. Right. But with me, you know, Matt Kennedy Gould is a person who wants to, you know, make good TV, a person who wants to follow direction. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, cause that's the kind of person I am. So because I'm a rule follower, I think that helped you guys out sure. a lot, you know? Sure. I can't say enough how much how out there that concept is, is that the show's all about you. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that, that doesn't come into someone's consciousness. You think you're a little gullible that way? Oh, I'm definitely a gullible type person. Yeah. yeah. Well, on behalf of everyone connected to the show, I want to thank you for not figuring it out. For what it's worth, I'm super glad that I never figured it out. Good. Coming up, we're going to revisit the moment where Matt almost put his own show in jeopardy when we return to The Joe Schmo Show. Coming up, Matt relives his emotional breakdown. Earl, you're dead to us. It's not worth it, man. And you won't want to miss what he has to say. Little did I know, those fucking assholes. Welcome back to the Joe Schmo Show, The Aftermath. I'm Ralph Garman, and I'm talking with Matt Kennedy Gould. Matt, we tried to plan for everything on this show, but the one thing we could never truly plan for was you. In fact, our most difficult night on the set was also your most difficult night on the set. Take a look. In the deciding vote, tonight's eviction ceremony. Earl. Earl, it's time. The house has voted. You're dead to us. We were all pretty shaken up when we saw your reaction to Earl's eviction, and everyone started wondering if we had gone too far. Is Matt crying? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my, my god! god. He loves you, man. You know what? No one watching will understand until you're in the position. You have no idea. Oh, he's just sensitive, Brett. <laughs> I know, but it just hurts me so much. Sure it does, because that's real. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not happy about this. When I heard Matt sniffling behind me, that was the hardest part. You know, I couldn't stop from crying then. I really wanted to tell Matt about the show uh, last night when he was crying behind me when Earl was leaving. When we saw Matt really crying, we it really hit us all that we need to be very careful. Like, what is, what is really going on here? They were really upset. I mean, truly. Everybody was. We didn't want to emotionally scar this guy or have him feel that bad, but we just never took into account how big of a heart this kid had. And then when it was done, a lot of the actors were sort of second guessing like the whole process, the whole thing. And then we realized that all the producers and writers were doing the same exact thing. So we're like, okay, we're all in the same boat here. So how do we make this better? You were so upset that we had to ask ourselves if we should even continue shooting the show. Yes. <laughs> we have to tell them. Look, tonight's not the right time to make this decision. The guy's exhausted. Leave him alone, let him sleep. We'll see how he feels in the morning. After getting some rest and spending some time with Brian, you may remember the producers asked you if you wanted to continue taping. And fortunately, you said yes. We never wanted him to feel that emotional. But at the same time, we did want him to have an experience where he could feel whatever emotions he wanted to feel. Well. Wow. I think we all want to know, what was it about Earl's eviction that upset you so much? It had a lot more to do than simply like, I loved Earl a ton and didn't want him to leave. You know what right. I mean? A situation you know, of this nature is stressful to anybody. Sure. And then you throw in somebody who cares about people and it jumps up a little more. Right. And then you throw in somebody who, you know, had all, could have sworn Ashley was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured I'd see Earl again. It wasn't so much that, but it was like a culmination and of everything all at one time. Yeah, I mean, I, it came out in tears, which I know is great. It makes for good TV. Um, but watching it, like, I know that I'm going to get my balls busted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it was like, only a few days Who's in. Who's gonna bust your balls? Like every friend I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never hear the end of that. Did it surprise you that everyone involved with the production got so upset because you were upset that we reacted to it so strongly? Um, I never felt vulnerable. <laughs> this is so funny. I never felt vulnerable to like the producers and stuff like that. Like I had so much freaking trust in them that they never <laughs> violated. Sucker. That I, and this thought never even occurred to me. Like 
Ah, oh, they made me feel so comfortable throughout the week. Little did I know those fucking assholes were doing. No. Um, Welcome to Hollywood, Mr. Yeah, Gold. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then to lighten up the mood, the producers came up with these great ideas of having a love affair between Dr. Pat and Hutch. Oh, wow. The and then a little game called Sumo Slam. Yeah. Both of those ideas, ideas kind of backfired, didn't they? Uh, the morning following Earl's eviction, I wanted no parts of anyone except for Brian, mm -hmm. okay? And I remember specifically going to lunch and standing at the end of the line and moving over and Hutch coming in with those dolls. I got a little action. And the second I saw those dolls, I thought, you gotta be kidding me, man. You got to be kidding me. Did you believe it and, were, and was ignoring it? Or were you, did you not believe it and was ignoring it? I really didn't have a choice but to believe it. It's go, this goes back to what we were saying before, like, you know, you buy into a lot. Then we go into the sumo slam game, where you really took out Dr. Pat. I mean, yeah. you laid her out. And I know you felt bad about that, too. I didn't want anyone to get physically hurt, but I wanted to jack every single person up as much as I could, because I wanted to get a lot of that out. And I knew that at some point during my stay at the Lab of Luxury, there would be some sort of athletic competition. Right. Because um, that's what I was banking on the whole time. Like, You knocked Dr. Pat on her ass. <laughs> Was any of that related to the fact that maybe you believed a little bit that she actually did sleep with Hutch? Were you pissed off at her a little bit for maybe actually having slept with that scumbag? No. I just, I'm curious personally. Was it a, was, was it a payback? Was there any payback involved in there at all? No. She just happened wasn't. to get in the way? She, she, you know what? My thinking was like, I looked over and saw Brian and saw her and, uh, I thought, I'm going to knock her down and beeline for Brian. That's, that was, he had the common it, sense it, to run. It went that. Yeah, he, boy, he was scared. Yeah, huh? he was. Yeah, and from what I've heard, Dr. Pat was level with the ground. She was, yeah. She, she caught That's air. That's hilarious. She, she, she caught some air. You know what? Air. She deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> Why does she deserve it? For being on the show. I got gotcha. you. me, you know? Someone's got to take one for the team. We'll be right back with more Matt Kennedy Gould when the Joe Schmo Show continues. Next, Matt reveals which cast member he really wanted. And it's not who you think it is. Welcome back to the aftermath of the Joe Schmo Show. I'm Ralph Garman, and I'm sitting here with Matt Kennedy Gould. Matt, it is no secret that you like the ladies. <laughs> Unfortunately, you were living in the one place on the planet Earth where your chance of scoring was about zero, but that, didn't, that did not stop you from trying to get frisky. Let's take a look. I respect women a lot, but I'm going through a period right now where like, I'm, I'm a little bit frisky. So that's why a lot of my thoughts are getting geared towards that. If anyone here, I'd like to get to know Ashley, at least in terms of females. In our short time together, sometimes you look at me with such soft eyes that it kind of just makes me willed a little inside, so thanks. <laughs> it did though, that was the truth. Ashley and I had a little bit of a physical connection, like she was kind of making a little bit of eyes at me. I know I'm a, a nice looking guy, but I also know like she probably thinks she can, you know, hook me a little bit and then, you know, toy me around. So I'm gonna try to let her use me. <laughs> this is my goal. We gotta get going. Gina, she's, she's quite sexy, too. We get rid of the rest of the people. That's it. That's it. That's Maybe it. we hook up a little bit. No. <laughs> no, but... First things first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if Dr. Pat wanted to, you know, hook up and have fun, like, I'm all for that, okay? I sleep like... Okay. So, like, if I do anything... Okay. I, tr I trust you. We'll get the dolls out, we'll do whatever. <laughs> we want to include them in, that's fine. Sorry to Molly's parents, maybe you don't know, but she is built. Built, built nice. <laughs> built like a Playboy bunny. I mean, you like Molly, I don't dude. know, I, I don't saw, know the she full did details. Something to me. She's just so nice, and she's hot. She looks super hot, like a tight little t-shirt and like matching shorts. Come on. I just loved Molly, so I loved being around her and I loved rubbing honey on her. <laughs> Molly's been throwing herself at Ralph and Ralph has been very accepting of that. Um, 
It made me sick. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. That was a little revealing. Yeah, a little bit. You must have hated me when I was having my little thing with Molly then, if you liked her that much. Okay, I'm gonna... You wanna come clean about I'm that I'm gonna go and say that, you know, you can, like, think a girl's hot and wanna hook up with her and, like, wanna have fun and be cool and not really be that invested in her at the same time. Oh, I see. So, like, though I thought it was very unprofessional of you. Yeah, I was. <laughs> and, uh, very odd of her to do that, being that she was such a Bible-banging girl. I, I did not hate you. I, you know, I'm, you know, I don't... I'm not hating the player, you oh, I know. That. I, 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 it's all for the team, Ralph. All That's right. the way I looked at it. If, all right. if I can't have Molly, it's a good thing Ralph can. <laughs> all right. Well, let's settle it once and for all then. Dr. Pat, Ashley, Molly, Gina, or Tawny Roberts. Which one had the best shot at becoming Mrs. Matt Kennedy Gould? Going to the altar. Absolutely. Dr. Pat. Really? Without a doubt. And that's why you kicked her ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing, though. I digress. The first few days at the Lap of Luxury, Ashley was real cool to me, right? But then one day, like, just when I thought, like, I'm like, this girl might be down for a little something, a little fun. That's all I wanted. I didn't want to walk to the altar with any of them. Right. I just wanted some good American fun. That's it. Right. Okay? But then one day, Ashley told me I was like her brother. Yeah. I threw that out the window. <laughs> you know? Then Dr. Pat had sex with Hutch. Well, yeah. there she went. We voted Gina off the first day. She went early, and yeah. uh, Molly had an ex-boyfriend, and then he came. She was a virgin, but yet she was hooking up with you. Yeah, it's all very odd. So, you know, I was left with Kip, and whatever happened, happened. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, coming up, we're going to take one last look at the man we've all come to know and love when The Joe Schmo Show continues. <laughs> Coming up. I will whoop your ass if you throw him in the pool. Hey, Molly, you make that choice right now. Yeah. Please take my seven days stay to Utah. If you had to do this all over again, would you make the same choice? Welcome back to the aftermath of the Joe Schmo Show. I'm Ralph Garman, and here, of course, is our star, Matt Kennedy Gould. One of the joys of making this show has been getting to know what a great guy you are. Thank you. It didn't take long for all of us to realize when we were working with you that you're an incredible person. And whatever the situation was, you were going to make the right decision. We found pretty early on that we could always count on you. Watch this. Matt, you are my knight in shiny armor. If oh. you don't let go, Joe, uh -huh. come on. I'm going to throw you in the freaking pool. You are not throwing him in the pool. I will whoop your ass if you throw him in the pool. Then you'll be up. If you let him get to you like that, I'm going to be real upset. Watch Don't even it. respond. Yeah, well. Because you got the mat, man. I'm the sickest dude, baddest dude here. Another of the many indicators of what a nice guy Matt is came up during the talent show because Kip was doing his awful magic act. Pick a card. OK. Five. Show the card to the all of the cameras. And he was supposed to pick the card out of the deck that Matt had previously picked. OK, there. Now, show the audience. This right. is the card. That's yes. it. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but once again, I mean, this guy is just golden. Where are my pictures that I took? Get they're, his pictures, dude. Just they're gone. Get... I ruined them. I cut them up. That was our memories. Well, what do you mean you cut them up, I dude? cut them up, dude. I thought it'd be funny. If you really cut them up, like, you honestly have to take a look at yourself. This was never brought up initially when I, I took on the you. gig, you know. They didn't yeah. say, you know, we're going to make an ass out of you. It was, it was all very, done very backhandedly. Makes you feel better. I'd do it. I'd dress up in that. I know you feel dumb and it might look dumb, but I don't think it'll have detrimental effects upon your career, really. Mm -hmm. But then, I, I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> this guy is just... There's, there's nobody else like him. Do you want to be in a hot tub when you're chained to a guy? I'm not, no offense, I'm, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't take any offense. Matt just turned his back out of respect for, you know, this relationship. He turned his back so we could talk to each other. Molly, you can go out that front yeah, door right now. You, you can't, can go she out. can't go out. She can go she out can't. and disqualify yes, herself. Yes, she can. Well, yes, she very, but she has to know that right. she'll be disqualified if she leaves the mansion. Molly, you make that choice right now. Yeah. I want you to please take my seven day stay to Utah. And there is no question about it. You will take the trip. Okay. Yeah. 
A lot of people might think that I might regret giving it to her, and I just want to say, not at all. I felt great about it. I felt like I had done something great for somebody. We could take Brian out the next round, too. Because I'm telling you right now, dude, he's going he's gonna to split your vote. I know you guys are friends. I think that's cool, whatever. You're too close. Done. Both Ashley and Hodge want me to vote Brian off. Um, it's not going to happen. I've made a commitment to Brian and him to me, and I plan on seeing that through. He's my friend. That's that. Wow. You could have made the wrong choice in any one of those situations. And yet you didn't. You always made the right choice. Do you breathe a sigh of relief knowing that that's your legacy on television? That's what people are going to get to see? Very much so, Ralph. Very much so. This is, uh, I did a good job. <laughs> but, you know, one thing, there's cameras watching you all the time. Uh, and that's something I'd just like to touch on real quick. You know, everyone continues to tell me I'm a great guy and blah, blah, blah. Like, I didn't... You know, who I, what I've seen, from what I've seen, that's who I am. But I was really cautious of, you know, my actions, you know. It wasn't like I just went full bore, like totally comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not as great as you think. So you were careful not to embarrass yourself? I was careful, I mean, no. No, I don't care about embarrassing myself. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. But if you meant in terms of like going back on my word, like that stuff, that's not even an option. Right. You know what I mean? Have you stopped at all? to think about how different your life would be if you hadn't been playing basketball on that particular day? Well, I'm going to do it right now. And <laughs> unbelievably different. You know, for a long time, I, I didn't believe in my interviews. Like, when people would say, you know, your life might change, and blah, blah. Never believed it. Now I kind of believe it might. Mm -hmm. um, thank God I love hoops. And thank God <laughs> my buddy asked me to be on that squad. If you had to do this all over again, would you make the same choice? Would you do it? 150% yes. We laughed, we cried, we beatboxed. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope you enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this crazy ride as much as we have. Wow. Matt, best of luck in everything you do, man. And the next time you're watching a reality show, or competing on a reality show, or simply the next time something weird happens in your life, ask yourself this question. Is it real, or is it the Joe Schmo show? Thanks for watching. You're dead to us. Please leave. No. Thank you, buddy. Turn on the TV. What do you see? Reality. People locked up in a house or on an island at what if each one was an actor playing his or her part Except for one real guy with a great big heart And he's the only one who doesn't know And in the end he wins all the dough That's the Joe Schmo Show